Okay, internal grasshopper dissection and anatomy. So whether you have male or female, the dissection will proceed relatively similarly, but make sure you also can identify structures on both. This is especially true of the female, because when you open her up, usually you'll see a great deal, a great number of eggs, um, and you'll need to be able to identify that for your practical. You can remove the legs, and note too that when you do, you can investigate them a little bit. As always, take your time, You've got plenty of time, and look at look at uh, the individual structures. See what you can see. For instance, there, inside the femur of the leg, note all the muscle fibers. You can imagine why there would be so many muscle fibers there. Obviously on the jumping leg, you're gonna need a great deal of muscle power. So anyway, as you're going through, feel free to stop along the way and just let your imagination take you where you'd like. And as always, ask me if you see something that you don't know what it is, but you're curious. Okay, so you can remove the legs and we're going to enter the grasshopper through the dorsal side here. So you want to create an area which you can do that, but you want to proceed slowly because hopefully, if you're careful, along the way you might be able to see an air sac. So I didn't see one there. I'm going to continue to pull this open very carefully. You can see the muscle fibers attaching up to the neck there. This is muscle fiber and fascia there. I'm going to very carefully cut along this edge. Now I'm not using my scalpel for that because it's harder to control cutting deeper with the scalpel, whereas with the dissecting scissors, you can put the lower cutting surface just under and then pull up a little. See, I'm gonna push this in there and then pull up. That hopefully means that I just barely get the exoskeleton and not a lot of the underlying structures, which will leave more things intact. I'm going to cut that all the way down, and then I'm going to very carefully start retracting this. And if I'm lucky, I can see an air sac. I don't see one there. Well, there is an air sac, but unfortunately it doesn't look overly inflated at the moment. There's an air sac there. On the PowerPoint on the website, you can see on another dissection that I did when I retracted, you can very clearly see an air sac still full of air. <clears throat> so make sure and take a look at that PowerPoint. At any rate, once you open and retract these fully, you can start to identify the internal structures. So. As this is a female, you'll note the eggs. They should be most dorsal. will be a varying number depending upon the female. You can very carefully, <coughs> excuse me, you can very carefully just tease away some of that extra tissue to get a good look at it. So here you have ovaries that are producing the individual eggs. I'm gonna zoom in on that a little bit, hopefully you can see it even better. Ovary, ovary, eggs being produced. From that, you can just trace it down and use the sketch as a reference and get oviduct. That will then lead out through here where she will deposit the eggs using that ovipositor. 
Okay, so I'm going to very carefully just lay those back. Now, as you can actually see, they come apart into individual ovaries and eggs. Here, see you've got a spiracle over here. Sometimes you can see if you just tease back this a little, you'll be able to find the spiracles on the inside. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Just go slowly, see what you can find, okay? As for the digestive system, we've already talked about the external features of the mouth and what each is used for. So the mouth will then go back to the esophagus. The esophagus goes to the crop, which is this bigger area here, okay? It is temporary food storage. From there, you want to just carefully pull these back, but don't destroy them because they're actually a feature you're going to want to look at. Get these ovaries back out of the way again. Okay. From there, underneath these projections, follow the crop to the gizzard. Okay, the gizzard is going to be mechanical digestion. You're going to have to move back these gastric cica, which are these, they're individual projections. Here, I just took a couple of them off here. And you can see they're individuals all held together and covering the gizzard here. The gastric cica, they go both directions, and they produce digestive enzymes that are secreted into the gizzard to get digestion going. Okay, so then after you are sure you can identify those, you can very carefully move them back, remove them. What you're trying to do is remove these individual things that you've already looked at without damaging anything else, so then you can identify those things. Now here, and this is typical, you know, these things happen, it's okay. You can actually see that in the process of that, I've compromised the um, digestive system here and I've it's ripped open. And that's okay, I can still see what's what, but I can also see the partially digested food in there. That's what this stuff is. Okay. So the gastric cica drains into the gizzard, digestion starts, it continues here in the intestine, <clears throat> where the mechanical, or excuse me, the chemical don't get that mixed up. The chemical digestion will continue and the absorption of nutrients will happen. Intestine. Okay. All these little stringy bits down here, these are called the Malpighian tubules. They actually serve as um, waste filters. So they'll filter waste from the animal for excretion. Kind of analogous to kidneys in us. That's what these little tubules are here. They look kind of spidery. Okay. So after all the food has been digested and has been, the nutrients have been absorbed from it, then the waste can exit. Now, if you didn't happen to do what I did and compromise the intestinal tract like that, you can also, at this point, go ahead and use your dissecting scissors to very carefully open the digestive tract and just see what's in there. Probably lots of what appears to be gunk. And that would be last meal what the animal had eaten before it died. You can do that all the way down, just kind of see what's there. Probably pretty fibrous. Okay. So, now as far as the reproductive organs, they're tiny. And everything's the same color, and of course that's why nothing ever looks like it does on the sketch. So it can be really hard to identify individual things. Make sure you can identify it on sketch at least. But don't give up, look for stuff. See if you can actually find anything. The 
best way to try that is to leave things intact as long as you can and then trace what you already know. So for example, I know that is oviduct because it comes from ovary. Individual eggs, oviduct. So what will happen is, after the eggs are produced up here, they'll travel down the oviduct. Down here, after mating, there should be a seminal receptacle, receptacle down here somewhere and amongst all of this, where the sperm will be stored. Looks like it's, is that intestinal tract or is that seminal receptacle? Sometimes it can be hard to tell the difference and just trace what you can. So this is still intestines. See how I, I know that because on either side is oviduct. So this can't be seminal receptacle here because it's actually part of the digestive tract. Okay, so I don't obviously see really clearly it's waste what where the seminal oh wait no so I'm going to carefully pull the digestive tract back away to try to leave mostly reproductive intact. You can see here the oviducts keep traveling until they're actually going to exit the body here. Okay, so it'll be a seminal receptacle, this area that will store the sperm after copulation. And the eggs will travel down the oviduct, fertilize. There's also a um, accessory gland down here. Sorry, I lost, lost that for a moment. An accessory gland that produces various secretions that will be protective for the eggs and also um, have adhesive properties so they stay where they're supposed to when she lays them. So she'll lay her eggs and then they will lie dormant for some time and then eventually hatch and that's a female. Now the male parts are probably even smaller but let's just see what we can see. So I'm going to remove the legs and that's just so that it's easier for me to get in there. I'm going to carefully start Cutting away at his exoskeleton. I'm trying to open it carefully here just on the off chance that I might get to see an air sac here. But like I said, make sure and see that on the PowerPoint because it's pretty obvious on those pictures. And pull that back. full air sac on that one either. That's, oh, wait, 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 wait. There we go. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. Oop, wrong way. Trying to get it to focus without... That's not going to focus, is it? Well, hopefully this is viewable there. I'm going to touch it here. See how it does that? And it's pretty transparent. It's air in there. So this is, the air will enter into the spiracles and then it'll go into these sacs and then into the um, tracheal tubes, which 
is part of the respiratory system. And then that, those tracheal tubes will travel throughout the tissue of the body and then diffusion will take place in order to um, remove excess carbon dioxide and deliver the oxygen necessary for cellular respiration. So diffusion is a very important part of that. And remember diffusion is the idea of um, things moving from um, high to low concentrations and that's how the delivery system of this will work. And here's another air sac. Oh, don't, don't pop, don't pop. Another air sac right there. They look like little bitty, tiny, very thin balloons. So we got to see that. Again, I'm going to open this up as best I can. Going through the respiratory system now. And look at that air sac right there. Oh, I hope that's focusing. Focus. That air sac right on top. Going through the respiratory system and through the digestive system there. Of the, on the female, the digestive, and on the male, we just got to see the respiratory a bit better. But again, you know, even if you've got a male, whatever, you need to tra trace everything here. So digestive, mouth, esophagus is going to be up in here back down so I can open it better. You can actually see the tympanic membrane on the inside there. See how it's very transparent, but there is actually a membrane there. So again, that's the sound receptor. Um, so, crop, gizzard, cica. Males are often smaller. They don't have to put as much resources into reproduction, so they are often smaller. So there's the cica. You can see the gizzard underneath of it, tracing that back to intestine, uh, piggy and tubules, are these masses of fibrous stuff. And then down here, of course, you would have testes and sperm duct and the seminal vesicle that'll add the secretions. And then copulation actually does occur, so fertilization is internal in the female. But finding those as individual, there might be some testy there, um, finding those as individual structures in something this small can be difficult, but feel free to put it under a dissection microscope, see if you can find it. You can show it around because that's pretty impressive. Here, and some muscle fiber and some attachment. So the nerve cord, actually on these animals runs along the ventral side. Seeing it again because everything is small and the same color can be difficult but it's worth at least trying. So down on the ventral side if you move back, oops is it attached there? No. If you move back the digestive tract, sometimes you can actually find the nerve cord. You'll have bundles of nerves all the way down called ganglia that then branch out in order to control individual muscles and have sensory functions. I'm not seeing it there. Let's see if we can find it back on the female here. Okay, so I'm gonna remove her ovaries. Remove her digestive tract a bit there. Oh, there's nerve cord right there. Okay, so it's really easy to miss because it doesn't take much to pull something away and go, oh, well, that doesn't, but the nerve cord, got something attached to my teasing other, the nerve cord doesn't exactly look all that different from like the tubules here, so how do you know what's what? Well, it's all about location in this case, so it comes ventral here, and then you can see this very clear cord 
with these little nodules. So here, the ganglia, ganglia, nerve cord. Notice a ganglia here too. And then you can actually see where it will branch out from there. So there's the nerve cord. They have a very small, what I guess you would call a brain, up in the head region, in the cranial region. So I'm just kind of carefully teasing away what I can to try to expose more nerve cord and I can sort of trace it along there. Hey, there it goes, there's nerve cord. Okay, so that should be most of what you need to know and again there are other structures you have to know so make sure and look at the powerpoints and the sketches and um, anything you can't find or any questions, always ask me.